Today's Mass Readings and Gospel Reflection April 28, 2022 Thursday The Second Week of Easter of Divine Mercy We bless your name, O Lord, for sending your own incarnate Son to become part of a family, so that, as he lived its life, he would experience its worries and its joys. We ask you, Lord, to protect and watch over this family, so that in the strength of your grace its members may enjoy prosperity, possess the priceless gift of your peace, and, as the church alive in the home, bear witness in this world to your glory. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. First reading. A reading from the book of Acts. Acts chapter 5 verse 27 to 33. When the court officers had brought the apostles in and made them stand before the Sanhedrin, the high priests questioned them, We gave you strict orders did we not? to stop teaching in that name. Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and want to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles said in reply, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus. Though you had him killed by hanging him on a tree, God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to grant Israel repentance and forgiveness of sins. We are witnesses of these things as is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they became infuriated and wanted to put them to death. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm Psalms chapter 34 verse 2, 9, 17 to 18 and 19 to 20 Let our response be the Lord hears the cry of the poor. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Bless the man who takes refuge in him. Response. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord confronts the evildoers to destroy remembrance of them from the earth. When the just cry out, the Lord hears them and from all their distress he rescues them. Response. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and those who are crushed in spirit he saves. Many are the troubles of the just man, but out of them all the Lord delivers him. Response. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Alleluia. John chapter 20 verse 29. Alleluia, Alleluia. You believe in me, Thomas, because you have seen me, says the Lord. Blessed are those who have not seen, but still believe. Alleluia, Alleluia. Gospel reading. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. John chapter 3 verse 31 to 36. The one who comes from above is above all. The one who is of the earth is earthly and speaks of earthly things. But the one who comes from heaven is above all. He testifies to what he has seen and heard. But no one accepts his testimony. Whoever does accept his testimony certifies that God is trustworthy. For the one whom God sent speaks the words of God. He does not ration his gift of the Spirit. The Father loves the Son and has given everything over to him. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever disobeys the Son will not see life, but the wrath of God remains upon him. The Gospel of the Lord Before we proceed with the video, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel. Also, please hit the notification bell, so you won't miss out when we release new videos. Feel free to share your comments, suggestions, and reflections at the comments section down below. Thank you and God bless. Now, let's proceed with the video. The Reflection on Today's Gospel 
You would think that if you were an atheist, you would know much about atheism. You would think that if you are a Christian, you would know much about Christianity. In a recent debate, the formidable self-described atheist, Professor Richard Dawkins, stated that most Christians do not know the New Testament. In fact, when self-described British Christians were asked to name the first book in the New Testament, only 35% could identify Matthew as the correct answer. Dawkins thus concluded that these individuals were not really Christian at all. He might have a point. But when Dawkins was asked in a recent debate to give the full title of The Origin of Species, by Charles Darwin he was confident he could. His Christian opponent then said, Go on then. Richard Dawkins then said, On the origin of species. With, Oh God, on the origin of species. There is a subtitle to the preservation of favored races in the struggle for life. To the amazement of the audience, this formidable debater and high pope of Darwinism could not answer the question. His opponent then said, If you asked people who believed in evolution that question and you came back and said 2% got it right, it would be terribly easy for me to go they don't believe it after all. But the truth is, Professor Richard Dawkins has always had the tendency to make himself big by making others feel small, which may actually help him in the long run. To believe in God means to open oneself to God. If science were the sole avenue to the Creator, then Jesus Christ would have appeared at Oxford. And as a scientist, but he didn't. If philosophy were the sole means to God, then the Lord would have appeared in Athens. As a philosopher, the likes of Plato or Aristotle, but he didn't. If music were the venue to God, then the Song of Songs would have started Graceland, but he didn't. He chose to write no music and chose to play no instrument. He and his apostles were no John Lennon or Beatles in the middle of the desert. I think the Lord chose none of the above because he knew we would do them better. Instead, what he chose to do was something that had never been seen before, done before or thought of before. He chose to do something remarkable, the likes of which we still marvel at every single time we witness it, hear about it and think about it. He chose to be small. All our lives we look to be big. We want to grow up. We want to have a bigger home, a bigger role a bigger impact. There is something inside of us that drives us to be bigger and better. And guess what? That's good. But how? That's the question. Christ answers the question. Be small. Be humble and you will be great. Unless the grain of wheat falls to the ground it cannot bear any fruit. The kingdom of God may be likened to a mustard seed that grew and became a tree. There is nothing wrong with being big. That is the goal. But if you want to be really big, then make yourself really small. Too many of the great modern philosophers are great among themselves, but not among us. They tend to spend all their time arguing among themselves which doesn't really leave much room for us. They seem to care more about their theories than care about us. The great scientists are great because they discover things for us. But they never invented a single thing they ever discovered. They write books that include detailed explanations, diagrams and drawings of heavens and humans as if they were plans of things to come. They take awards for plagiarism. They never give credit to God who did it all and without any known drawings. Art no longer impresses us because contemporary art doesn't seem to reflect us. It is no longer the image or reflection of the inner soul. Instead, it is the image of a lost and dark soul. The great schools have failed us. In their ignorance or arrogance they either encouraged or failed to stop the terror of European enlightenment. Fascism, communism and Nazism. But the church, in its meekness sent forth the terror of communists and fascists. Bless John Paul II. Schools can take no credit for the mother to fall in human nature. Mother Teresa. No great school ever educated the heart of Saint Francis of Assisi and not a single school was willing to accept Montreal's architect of miracles, Saint André Bisset. This is to name just a few. From our vantage point, 
Everything on earth looks big. From our vantage point. Everything in the heavens looks small. That's a good hint that we have a bad point of view. God is very big and made himself very small. Those who wish to be big must think big eternally but not act big as if they were God. To know the Lord requires an exterior as well as an interior microscope and telescope. To serve the Lord requires tenacity as well as humility. To love the Lord requires a heart as well as a brain. The one who comes from above is above all. Including me. That makes a lot of sense. Given the fact that he who comes from above came down to me, 